Welcome everybody. Today we're going to learn about acids, bases, and salts. Uh, to learn more about this, you can read in section 19.1 in your text. Um, so before we start talking about acids and bases, we need to start to review dissolving. When a substance dissolves, you must break bonds within that substance. Uh, let's talk about the two types of substances we've discussed a lot about. Uh, when an ionic substance dissolves in water, certain bonds break. What kinds of bonds would those be? All right? Those would be ionic bonds. When molecular compounds dissolve in water, what sort of bonds break? Well, it's actually not the kind of bonds typically that are in molecular compounds, covalent bonds. Instead, it's actually the intermolecular forces that break. Specifically, we're going to talk mostly about, what do you think? Uh, some of you may have guessed it, hydrogen bonds. All right. So to talk, just to give you a visualization of what this is, what we're talking about, here is an ionic compound, a crystal of salt. When water dissolves it, the bonds between the ions in the salt uh, get broken and the ions are pulled apart and water will form a shell around it where the corresponding partial charges on water will be attracted to the opposite charge on whichever ion it is. So this is showing you that the positive hydrogen ions are being attracted uh, hydrogen atoms are in water are being attracted to the negative chloride ions in salt and this is showing you that the uh, sodium ions are being attracted to the which are positive are being attracted to the negative uh, side of water on oxygen. In contrast here we have a glucose molecule being dissolved when glucose is just a glucose is a solid sugar, it looks like table sugar. It doesn't taste quite the same, but it looks quite a bit like it. And uh, when it's solid, it's connected by hydrogen bonds. Um, these bonds stick it together and make it form a crystal. Um, and when you dissolve glucose, these break. But the covalent bonds that hold the sugar together don't. So this is showing us one single glucose molecule that has been separated from its uh, sister molecules and has been approached by water. Water is attracted to all of the hydroxyl groups on glucose and will form hydrogen bonds with it. All right, so let's actually define an acid. Before we define an acid, uh, let's talk about acidity. Acidity is hydrogen ions in water. Repeat this to yourself five times. Write it with in big fancy letters in your notes. This is one of those crucial concepts you need to know now and for the rest of your science career in school. All right, so if hydrogen ions in water is acidity and acid is something that creates acidity, in other words, it's something that creates hydrogen ions when dissolved in water. And an acid will also make an anion when dissolved in water. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. So here are some examples of acids, uh, sodas, especially uh, cola, which has acid added to it, is an acid. Vinegar is an acid. We have acid in our stomach, hydrochloric acid. Citric acid and some other fruit acids are found in citrus fruits. Uh, proteins are made of amino acids, which we've already talked about when we talked about um, proteins earlier. 
and DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So the A in DNA stands for acid. Uh, there are acidic groups found in it. Acids all have a particular taste. Our taste buds on our tongue are, uh, part, some of them are built to detect acidity, and we detect acidity as sour. Um, so we, uh, we extremely sour things will make us pucker up. It's an instinct. Uh, concentrated acids are dangerous. They can cause chemical burns. You can identify a compound as an acid if it is a molecular compound whose formula begins with hydrogen or ends with our old friend carboxyl COOH. So let's take this as an example. Here we have HCl. This is hydrochloric acid. Why is it a molecular compound? Well, it contains hydrogen and chlorine, which are both nonmetals. That makes this not an ionic compound. So when you put hydrochloric acid in water, it will actually dissolve. And unlike sugar, the glucose we just saw, um, it its covalent bonds will actually break. So when you add hydrochloric acid to water, it will turn into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. So this is an example of a non-ionic substance dissolving in water and turning into ions. So that makes acids different. Acids aren't ionic, but create ions. All right, let's look at two more examples of molecular compounds that contain hydrogen. Um, do you all recognize this compound? What would its formula be? All right, this is methane. Its formula is CH4. It's a molecule because it contains all nonmetals. But notice that by convention, its formula is written with the hydrogens separate. That's one, one reason that that is, is to indicate that the hydrogens here do not break. These covalent bonds don't break. And methane is not an acid. The reason why they don't break is because this is a nonpolar bond. Here we have another example of a molecular compound. This is called acetic acid. So it's obviously going to be an acid. Another common name for acetic acid uh, solutions is vinegar. And so we've got uh, some more hydrogen carbon uh, nonpolar bonds. These don't break. However, on our car carboxyl group, COOH, this is a polar uh, oxygen hydrogen bond. And the carboxyl group is such that this extremely polar bond here can let this hydrogen come off. So this hydrogen can become hydrogen ions. When acetic acid dissolves, you end up getting uh, the hydrogen ion here, and this whole big thing is called an acetate anion. I didn't mention um, on a previous slide, I forgot to mention that, that um, 
here we have the chloride anion. So go back and, and note that when you dissolve an acid, you get um, a hydrogen ions and anions. So now let's talk about what a base is. There's multiple definitions of bases. The most common one that we'll be working with is a compound that dissolved in water will dissociate and produce hydroxide ions and cations. Bases taste bitter. Um, here's someone drinking coffee. Coffee has a lot of uh, basic substances in it, and part of the reason why coffee tastes bitter is because of that. And bases feel slippery. Uh, this is thought to be because bases, when added to oils, will create soaps. Uh, which are slippery and so when you touch a base it will react with the oils on your hands and make you feel slippery. If you've ever gotten bleach on your hand and felt like it, your hands were slippery for minutes afterwards even if you kept rinsing, that's why. Bases are ionic compounds so they contain um, a cation and hydroxide. So the quintessential example of a base like this is sodium hydroxide, which is also called lye. When it dissolves, it will break apart into sodium cations and hydroxide anions. There is one other definition of a base that you need to know about, and that is uh, specifically about mostly molecular compounds. So acids are always molecules, but bases can be either ionic or molecules. The only uh, And the ones that are molecules don't create hydroxide ions, but they accept hydrogen ions. Um, there's only one of these that we need to know about, and that's ammonia, which is NH3. When you expose ammonia to a hydrogen ion, it will react and create the ammonium ion. And so it takes away hydrogen ions, and that's what makes it a base. When you mix an acid and a base together, you end up getting, we've got hydrogen here, hydroxide there. You end up getting water and a salt. So that's why this picture is here, because it's seawater, water, and salt. This is, if we think about it, this is a double replacement reaction. All acid-base reactions are double replacements, but not all double replacements are acid-base reactions. This is also called a neutralization reaction. Specifically for acid bases. So the products of an acid, one more time, are water and a salt. A salt is defined as the cation from a base and the anion from an acid. Just about every ionic 
compound could be classified as a salt. So we just saw that sodium chloride could be produced from hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. All right.